Hello, everybody. My name is Dan McDonald. I am um, OmniO. I, I am OmniOS Engineering. <laughs> uh, OmniOS is a distribution of Illumos, and that's what I'm talking about today. Illumos is five years old this past August. So when people think about Illumos, they tend to think about the features that it inherited from what was Open Solaris, ZFS, DTrace. Illumos is a reference implementation for ZFS still. DTrace, Crossbow, which is a network virtualization. Um, zones, which now is getting a lot of press lately, is containers, but we've had these in Illumos for a long time. Um, you can get them as lightweight Illumos instances. You can get them as KVM zones, where you actually, the zone itself just runs KVM. And new from Joyent in their smart OS is LX zones, where it's a native zone that has enough emulation in it to run a good chunk of Linux binaries. Um, two other acronyms that are associated with um, Illumos are there's the FMA, the fault management architecture. When a device goes crazy, you get to hear about it sooner rather than later. You can repair the device, acquit the, acquit the device, and that interacts with ZFS as well. And the last one is SMF, the System Management Framework. Um, I hear there's something in Linux called SystemD. Uh, SMF is sort of uh, mm, kind of like it, but different. Um, anyway, so, but those are all things that when people talk about Illumos, those are, those are what come, comes to mind. Now, going back a bit, prehistory, Sun Microsystems, for their products, had Sun OS. And Sun OS's one through four were derived from various versions of BSD. The last one was Sun OS 4, and that was derived from 4.3 BSD. Um, so in 1988, AT&T, who had invested a good chunk of money in Sun, I believe it was 20% of the company, um, announced System 5 Release 4, which was going to be the one great Unix. It was going to merge BSD and old System 5. It didn't happen that way, as we all know, but this eventually became Sun OS 5.0 and marketed by Sun's marketing people, and we'll talk about them a fair amount early on here, um, as Solaris 2, and Sun OS 4 was retroactively changed to be Solaris 1. To build Solaris 2, you had consolidations. You had desktop software, you had the user land, you had the OS net consolidation, which is actually what formed the core of Sun OS. You can pay attention to that rectangle as we see this picture pop up again. And there are other distributions as well. And you put them all together and they form Solaris. Whoops. What happened? Yep, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. Weird transition effect. So Solaris 2.1 through 2.6 um, SunOS 5.x corresponded to Solaris 2.x. Um, x86 and Spark, their source bases were separate in the uh, Solaris 2.0 and 2.1, and they were merged after the 1991 acquisition of Interactive Unix, which is the genesis of the Solaris x86 code. Um, internal engineering processes matured during this time. We would uh, eat our own dog food on a well-known server in, originally in Mountain View and then later in Menlo Park called Jurassic. And it would help the quality death spiral stop, stop the quality death spiral. Basically, oh, this is bad. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to find bugs. Oh, it gets worse. And it spirals downward. Um, there's a great little blurb about this on the Illumos page that talks about how you stop the quality death spiral, which is you put it on all the time and you run it and it, it, nowadays it's called continuous delivery but this was going on in the early 90s. Um, and during the time, especially 2.5 and later, some Sys5-isms were replaced or downplayed. Um, ask me offline about sock mod. I'll start frothing at the mouth. It was pretty bad. Um, it got replaced with a real kernel sockets implementation as late as Solaris 2.6. Um, and Solaris did get much better over this stretch. I was a customer, um, and 2.4 was actually pretty good to use. After that, I joined Sun for 2.5.1 and 2.6 and beyond. 
Now, the initial 64-bit port for Spark was going to be Solaris 2.7. And somebody at marketing decided, no, we need to make the number bigger. So it became Solaris 7. <laughs> SunOS 5.x was the core of Solaris X for 7 through 10. Each release introduced ton new, tons of new things, and I mean, I could just go on and on and on about this. You know, I liked 7 because we put in FastMD5. I liked 8 for IPsec. I liked 9 for Ike. I liked 10 for NAT Traversal, um, but that was just what I was doing. And we, while we continued to work on Solaris 7 through 10, we'd find new and improved ways to dog food and not just Jurassic either. We had an MP3 server at one point until it got shut down by uh, HR. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 test, it tested tons of storage. For, well, at the, nowadays it would be laughably small, but back then it was, it was, a, it was a lot of storage. Um, so we do that. And Solaris 10, yeah, so sorry, I'm skipping a bullet here. Um, Solaris 9 had x86 development suspended, and this caused a revolt among customers and among internal people. So, yeah, we basically pushed it over the edge and brought it back for one of the Solaris 9 updates. And Solaris 10 introduced 64-bit AMD support. And after Solaris 10 released, um, this has been brewing inside Solan for some time, but let's open source Solaris. So starting with a D-Trace appetizer that came out in 2004, we open sourced all of Solar most of the Solaris OSNet consolidation. And I'll show you that picture again with the different consolidations. In 2005, there's some code in the OSNet consolidation that was brought in from other, other equipment, OEM code. And so they, couldn't pu they wouldn't let us publish it, and that's OK. But everything else was covered under the MPL-like community development and distribution license. It's a weak copy left license. You, if you alter an existing file under CDDL, you have to contribute your changes back to the community. You can introduce new files into the big system, and you can put them under any, almost any license you want. Um, GPL happens to not be one of those, but oh well. Um, all the other consolidations were also open source. Most of them came from open source components to begin with anyway, like X like other user land, pro, user land ap activities, applications, and libraries like OpenSSL or Apache. Um, so this was great, and we started building a small community. We wanted to get a distro out, but our marketing didn't know what to do, so they called it Open Solaris, which really ticked off people because everybody wanted to do their Open Solaris distro. But Sun Marketing said, no, let's copyright Sun Microsystems, and this caused a big kerfuffle. I didn't participate in it too much, thank God, but it was a mess. Um, and still, in spite of that, we had a decent community starting to form around Open Solaris. It was good. I liked it. Got to interact with people and people outside of Menlo Park or Burlington, and it was good. And so you would have the desktop consolidation, the user land consolidation, OSNet, um, which was called ONNV gate. Um, had to do with a code name for what was to become at the time Solaris 11 um, and other consolidations. And then 2009 came along. I was in Switzerland when somebody told me that IBM was thinking about buying Sun and I'm like, oh, that rumor's been going on for years. No, check the headlines and it was there. So those began the takeover rumors and late in 2009, Oracle outbid or out something to IBM to purchase Sun Microsystems. Now, I can't speak for anyone else who was ex-Sun at the time, but I really thought, you heard me talk about Sun marketing earlier, I really thought that Oracle was going to buy us, leave us mostly alone in the technical spaces and kind of grind the business part up because Oracle's all about business. And I figured they'd play their strengths and leave us alone. I was wrong. In spite of the open Solaris missile crisis I talked about earlier, we had a community building around us. Some people wanted to unshackle some of the closed source components that had various restrictions on their source. So um, Garrett Dillamore, Rich Lowe, and a couple other people started writing open source replacements, uh, borrowing, stealing a lot of code, borrowing because it, it wasn't really stealing, from FreeBSD um, and bringing those up. And so in August of 2010, Garrett Dillamore announced the culmination of this effort, which was called Illumos 
which removed more of the closed source from the ON gate. Lumos was originally intended to be a downstream of Open Solaris, an Open Solaris distribution. Um, it was not really intended as a replacement, but uh, there was talk with Oracle having happened that we might need an insurance, the community might need an insurance policy. And sure enough, <laughs> that happened. I'm not going to dive into this too much because I'll start getting frothy at the mouth and go on and on and on and finish before I finish and take out my time before I finish the rest of the talk. There's a great video on YouTube by Joyance Brian Cantrill. Highly recommend you look it up at some point. Literally put in Illumos Fork Yeah in the search box. If you want to hear just the part about Oracle, move in about 33 minutes. He gives a much longer history of SunOS than I do. And he also gives it from his point of view. He worked in the kernel, kernel department, which was upstairs for me in Menlo Park. I worked in the networking and then security department, which was on the second floor. Um, but with Oracle disingenuously closing Open Solaris, it was time to cash in the insurance policy. So as of August 2010, it started off looking like this, and then came the lawnmower. And again, the reason I mention the lawnmower will become funny, will become relevant once you watch Brian's talk. Anybody who's seen Brian's talk already, you, you've seen Brian's talk. Yep. So the lawnmower came along and you say bye bye to Open Solaris and say hello to Oracle Solaris. So now that we're done talking about that, let's talk about Illumos. Oracle is not involved at all with Illumos, just so you know. Um, when people talk about the common, common ancestry and common functionality we have, the uh, most clever term I've used is Solarish. Oh yes, we can get this package to compile on Solarish systems. Means it works both on Oracle Solaris and on Illumos distros. The upstream repository, which is called Illumos Gate, contains a kernel. It contains most of the system libraries. LibC, for example, we draw our ABI at the library level at LibC. Um, and most of the system commands. And I've been telling this at the Illumos booth yesterday. You have FreeBSD on one end, which is this big, it's the whole ball of wax. And then you have Linux on the other hand, which is literally just the kernel. We fall in between those two points. And so we provide the kernel and some of the libraries, but we do not, and the commands, but we do not quite have enough in Illumos Gate to form a fully bootable operating, or a fully packageable operating system. Um, and because of that, Illumos has distributions. And when people use Illumos, they get a distro. Um, I'm gonna go through quickly in historical order when these appeared. Nexenta originally started off as a, a different desktop for Open Solaris back in 2008. Then they pivoted to become a storage appliance, which they are still doing today quite successfully. Um, and it's commercial now, beyond a certain size limit. I think it's like 18 terabytes or something. I can't remember. Um, Delphix was some ex-Oracle database people before Oracle bought Sun. Um, they were trying to use ZFS to help make managing Oracle databases smoother. And they were using Open Solaris for that back then. Then they started using Illumos. And the ZFS leadership all works for Delphix now. Matt Ahrens, um, George Wilson, yeah, they're all Delphix. Um, in 2010, right after Illumos was announced and right after Open Solaris, the, the memo, the email that talked about the closing of Open Solaris leaked. All of the open stuff got cloned and rebranded under the name Open Indiana. If you see anybody at our booth using Illumos on a desktop, it's Open Indiana. Um, in 2011, Brian Cantrell and his colleagues at Joyent, Brian left Sun early 2010 before it actually closed. Um, again, watch his video for his story on that. But um, they formed the hypervisor-focused smart OS distribution because they did everything, do everything in zones or containers, as some people call them. Um, you can get smart, you can get Joyant's Triton product now, apparently, and run Docker images 
but on Illumos, thanks to the LX zones, the emulation I was talking about. Um, 2012, my employer, Omni TI, um, wanted to strip out all the desktop stuff and just have an a, a, a image packaging system distribution that had nothing but server goodness, and that's OmniOS. Um, and there are more, and we will talk about them a little in the next couple of slides. But yes, and so everybody's distro gets formed a different way now. They all have a Lumos in common, but they might package them differently, they might build them differently, and that's okay. So I'm going to give one slide for every district who offered. I'm not going to talk about the appliance distros until the end because they are commercial. Um, so open Indiana. And if you download the slides that I put up, all these links should work. Um, and it's the most direct inheritor of Open Solaris. For those of you who used Open Solaris, OI will be an equally comfortable experience. Um, the hipster branch is where all of the action goes on now. So you might, you might hear people talking about OI hipster, and really that's what they're talking about is they're talking about OI. Um, the user support, there's a mail alias for it. They're on free node, and they're more than happy to help. We have a long, we have a strong IRC presence in Illumos. And so if you want to see us on, every distro has a channel, as well as Pound Illumos. Joy and Smart OS has its own .org page, even though they build all of their products around it too, but everything Joyant does is open Solaris. If it's not under CDDL, for their more recent user land stuff, they've adopted Mozilla Public License version two. Um, and I, you know, again, it has every, the CDDL is very much of that lineage of licenses. Um, it's distribution, it's geared toward servers and data centers for clouds. Uh, and it's geared toward all forms of virtualization. I talked about Linux and Illumos containers. Everything runs outside the global zone, we call it in Illumos. Um, and then they have KVM zones as well for arbitrary guests. And the way SmartOS works is interesting. You plug in a USB stick and it, boot, it loads the USB stick into memory as a RAM disk and then it's up and running. Any spinning rust on a SmartOS machine is just storage. So that works out pretty well for them. Um, they're Pound Smart OS on Freenode, and they have a discussion list too. Hi, this is my distro. <laughs> um, our homepage is there. Um, I did not start this distro. I joined OmniTI after OmniOS had been out for a year. But uh, it's server focused, it's image packaging system. That was one thing that OpenSolaris introduced to the world. Um, and we release stables every six months. We release long-term releases every two, every two years. We, you know, we're on 014 for stable right now and 016, I'm sorry, 014 is long-term. 016 is our current stable. 018 will be coming out this spring. Um, we're on free note as well and we have a mailing list. And again, all these links will work if you download the PDF. Igor Kosukov is working on a Debian packaged distro which has desktop support in it called Delos and he's, 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 he's hardcore. He, he, really, he, he does this and he also has some Zen work going on in there too which is very, very interesting. Um, he's also working on the LX Zone port from SmartOS. Um, in Italy, Gabriel Bolfan uh, is working on um, Sonical's Extreme OS. Um, there's ISO releases, a company website, and it's a slim and straight, he has a, they have a desktop version and a server version. And um, it's IPS packaged and I believe you can pay support, pay them for support as well. Yeah, um, yeah I'll talk about that after we're done with the other distros. Um, Peter Tribble is here in the audience today. Uh, he has Triblix which is retro styling and modern components. He bases things on top of System 5, the old Sun System 5 Release 4 packaging, but he's, there's modern tooling on top, so you don't have to deal with the clunkiness of the old SVR4 package, package in stuff, package receive. Um, it's general purpose, and it's strong on desktop and on zones, and it works on x86, and not all Illumos distros work on Spark, but Triblix is one of them that does, Delos is too. Um, and Peter can talk to you more about Triblix in person. 
He's in the third row right there. And we're, yeah, he just raised his hand. So you can talk to him about that afterwards. Now, not all der Lumos derivatives are suitable for just hacking on them. Um, the two major appliance distros are Nexenta Store, um, Software Defined Storage, and Delphix, which is specifically tuned for databases. The idea is you can clone, using ZFS primitives behind, behind, the, behind the curtain, you can clone your database, bang on it, destroy it, and bring it right back up to the state you snapshot it at before in very short order. If you guys have used ZFS on any operating system, uh, and if you've used snapshots and clones and promotes, you know how easy this is because of its copy-on-write implementation. Now, for Lumos, we also have sources of extra software. Uh, this is kind of small. Um, Joyent employs Jonathan Perkin, and he works on package source, and it is now available for all Lumos distros. Um, an old one from the days of Sun was um, OpenCSW, um, community, community software. It used to be, back in the old days, it was Sun CSW, but now it's OpenCSW. Um, it uses System 5 packaging, and it works on anything with System 5 packaging tools. Those are part of Illumos Gate, so they're available to use, even though nobody uses them in their base distros. You can still use the System 5 package tools. Um, SFE... Um, whip. There he is, right there. Tomas is here today. He can talk to you about SFE, Spec Files Extra. It's an IPS repository. Uh, it's community supported on all of the distros that use IPS, which includes Open Indiana and OmniOS, and even Oracle Solaris 11. So, because that uses IPS as well, um, and open for other distros as well. But um, I know their IPS packages and. We, OmniTI has our internal tools, but we mirror them publicly if anybody wants to use them, and that's the OmniTI MS repository, or ms.omniti.com. We're moving forward with Illumos. Um, we've had, we've had, I'm oh, sorry, this is the what we've done so far. Um, we've been able to get KVM support in for Illumos, so you can run hardware virtual machine. We've improved Comstar, which is the common SCSI target, and it's for iSCSI, um, or iSCSI or for um, SCSI over fiber channel. Um, Nexenta Store has, led, has done recent changes in here. We're hoping to see those upstream very soon. Um, OpenZFS is now its own entity. It's still downstream from Illumos Gate, and Illumos Gate is still the reference implementation for OpenZFS, but ZFS works on every operating system that anybody in this audience is using. There's ZFS on Linux, and ZFS is integrated in FreeBSD, uh, and I'm pretty sure, you know, if, if I'm, there might be some I'm missing there, but ZFS is now available in its own component, so you can place it into your operating system of choice if it's not there already. Um, Alex Zones was something that started in Open Solaris, the ability for a zone to emulate Linux enough in its library layer to let Linux apps run. It kind of fell by the wayside, but Joint brought it back from the dead, and they're making hay from it now, and it's great, and I hope to see it in all the distros someday. There are people working on that. Um, in the past year, we've put in EFI partition and GPT booting to get up with modern hard drives. Um, we were able to build Illumos Gate. For a long time, you could only build it on, on, on Open Indiana. We now have fixed that in OmniOS, and other distros have also been able to use those changes for OmniOS so they can build Illumos Gate on whatever distro you're running, which is good when you're trying to upstream software into Illumos Gate. Um, various drivers, we have NVMe, we've got more BGE, more Intel, um, we're working on um, other stuff in the next slide with works in progress. Um, we are, more of our tools are now open source. They had started off as open sourced, but not part of any consolidation. We've now moved those into the Illumos gate consolidation, like DMake and the math library. Um, OpenZFS making tons of forward progress. I'm wearing the OpenZFS developer summit shirt. They do that once a year in California. Uh, and I'm probably forgetting some things. The OpenZFS Summit, like I said, held October. OpenZFS itself is now downstream from Illumos, and they did that so they can do GitHub pull requests for people contributing from other ZFS implementations. 
And they have their own website now, openzfs.org. Um, there's SmartOS, the joint people are improving virtual networking because they are, they are basically a cloud provider, so they have to do that. They have virtual networking improvements. We're working on more drivers, NVMe beyond version 1.0. We're working on the Intel 40 gig, and we, have, we get a little help from vendors. The very last slide, I'm gonna have a, an appeal to hardware vendors. I don't know if there are any in the audience or any who might be watching this video later, but I do have an appeal for the hardware vendors. If you wanna contribute, first thing you do is start using your favorite distribution. Most of us have easy downloads in ISO, Pixie Boot, or USB. Um, that you can DD onto a USB stick. I'm handing out OmniOS installers at the Illumos booth today. Um, we don't have a lot left, but uh, I'll be there and you can grab one for yourself. Um, OmniOS also has AWS images if you want to try it in the cloud. Um, and if you want to try it in the cloud just natively, you can go grab a joint smart machine. Um, and recent email threads have shown that ByteMark, Cloud Sigma, and OVH all will gladly support Illumos for you. I'd like you to share your experiences. Um, we have a strong Twitter presence on social media. I'm at Kibi Says. You'll see that at the end, last slide. Um, you can visit the Pound Illumos on IRC. Um, and all of our distros have channels too, SmartOS, OmniOS, and Open Indiana. We blog a lot. And you should, you know, if you, have some, if you have some experiences with Illumos, we'd like to hear about it. You can blog about it too. Tell your coworkers, your IT folks, and your management because they're the ones who have the purse strings at the end of the day. If you're running a software project, Illumos is a thing. You should be building for it. We can help. Um, I had a customer who really wanted PTPD, and so I had to go to town and get that to work, and the PTPD upstream gladly took it. Um, also let your hardware vendors know that you're using Illumos. Again, I'll come back to that on my last slide. And if you see something broken, file a bug, illumos.org slash issues. We, we, we take bug reports. Um, if you're wanting to contribute code, we're on GitHub, and you can compile stock Illumos gate on at least OmniOS and Open Indiana, and other distros are gonna follow suit. Each distro usually has its own child of Illumos gate. Um, we have a Lumos OmniOS and OmniOS, for example. Um, and for small changes, or you know, a library or some other independent module, you can build the individual component to test it. Um, and any processes we have in Lumos for code review and requesting to integrate um, is a shrink to fit thing. If you have a typo in a man page, it's not gonna require much in the way of review. If you are contributing a new device driver, you're gonna have to scrutinize that a little. Sun's engineering culture, all the things that Illumos does inherited themselves from Sun's engineering culture. And so when, yeah, and these elements are pretty much appear here. You get on the developer's mailing list, you need to get code review, at least it, one review for something simple, two or more for something more complicated. Um, and you submit, once you're done, to our, the, you submit the, the diffs and to the RTI advocates list. It's a email version of a pull request, and we will integrate your bits upon appro approval or we'll kick them back. Um, Distro-specific repos may have different rules. Um, in OmniOS, we take pull requests on the OmniOS repos, so especially in the OmniOS build, which is our user land, so take that. A good contribution, and this is, you know, this is something that we all inherited, that we all, the Illumos people who are ex-Sun, we all inherited from Sun, and so we try and make sure this happens too. We want the analysis to be in the bug report. Um, our commit messages are small because they reference bug reports. Um, if it's a bug fix, it would be nice if you know where it was introduced, especially if it was post Open Solaris where we have source history. Some bugs have been around before Open Solaris opened up, so we can't, you know, you can just say they were there for a long time. Um, we want to make sure it's been tested. We have user source tests in Illumos, especially for ZFS. The ZFS test suite is wonderful. And um, again, anything I'm talking about here shrinks to fit. If it's small, keep it small. If it's an epic code, you're gonna probably want some epic block comments to go along with it. 
As of now, we have no formal organization. We lack bounties, governance, marketing, ownership, a legal presence, and a harassment or code of conduct. We really like to fix all of these. And as we go on, we're continuing. Most of us are just up to our eyeballs and trying to get things to keep working and or getting releases out the door. So we haven't had time to kind of coalesce into a formal organization yet. Um, we'd like to. I do have one last favor, and anybody here who works with hardware, works with hardware OEMs, I would like to ask those people to do a Lumos development first. And I mentioned Solarish earlier as an adjective. If you write for Oracle Solaris first, you're handcuffed. You really are. Um, and you will lock out all the Nextent Store customers, all the Smart OS customers, all the OmniOS customers. Um, if you write code for Lumos first, you write it under CDDL, which is a license that's perfectly acceptable to Oracle for them pulling it in. And you can make modifications to Oracle without shutting anyone else out. And we're ready in the community to help. I mean, we've talked to Intel a little bit about this already, and they've been at least generous with hardware, which is good. Um, we'd, like to, we, we'd like to continue that and have a flourishing hardware ecosystem for, for Lumos. So, yeah. Um, this is good. Uh, a little faster than I thought, but that's okay. Um, I'm Dan McDonald, I'm at Kibi Says on Twitter. And I'm Dan McDee, typically on IRC. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments about Illumos at this time? I'd be more than happy to take them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, he's using it. Um, there, there he is. Um, does anybody, anybody else have any questions or comments? There's a microphone guy right there. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, we have some time. You guys can go get some food, and I guess the next talk's at 1 o'clock. Thank you.